this is my garden in Hackney in East London. Um, I was really happy when Linda asked me to film this garden tour. I can't wait to show you around and I hope you really enjoy it. Um, the, we've lived here for seven years now and we're slowly developing the garden bit by bit. We've got somewhere along the way but there's quite a lot left to do here and I hope you'll see some of that when we get towards the back of the space. The house is a Victorian townhouse. It was built in 1870 and it's a sort of classic London house. It's tall and thin. Um, the garden is the same width as the house so it's quite narrow but quite long. Uh, roughly 5 by 25 meters. Right, let's take a look around the garden. Right, so now I'm standing um, just outside the house, just walked through the French doors that lead uh, to the garden and you can see we've got our little dining area here where we like to have breakfast and dinner as much as we can in the summer and uh, we've got some quite lovely brick paving here um, that was actually here when we moved in, one of the few things that I've kept and closest to the house I've got some herbs growing in pots and also in this bed on the left hand side so we've got rosemary and lots of mint, strawberries, little things like that and then if I move a little bit forward you can see the kind of the main bit of the garden that you see from the house now when I started working on this space the main thing that I wanted to achieve was to use the width of the space and not just do this classic thing that people do in London or sort of town gardens that are long and narrow where you just have two flower beds running either side with a path in the middle. It's very nice if you like that kind of thing but it does make it a bit corridor like and I really wanted to um, increase the sense of space so what I've done is I've made my path go right out onto each side actually touching the fence so you can basically reach the uh, either side of the garden and it just gives you a bit more sense of space and gives you different points of view depending on where you are in the garden. Um, so uh, before I even moved here I knew in my head what I wanted the layout to be. I wanted to create a formal really a formally laid out garden which isn't um, what people tend to do in, in London city gardens but I had seen um, a picture of Nigel Slater's wonderful garden and basically it had a, a former layout with um, six square uh, box hedged uh, beds and I just thought it was so fantastic to have that structure in a small garden um, and I wanted to do something similar. Um, so what I decided to do was to create these four identical beds um, with a sort of opening in the middle. Um, the beds are basically squares just with a corner sort of chopped off to create this octagonal uh, open space in the middle with a with a pot. Um, so if we walk down uh, I'm gonna go on to this gravel path. I love using gravel. I love the sound it makes and also it's really easy and cheap to lay which isn't a bad thing. Okay so I'm just going to walk around the pot. I'm now under our apple tree which was here when we moved in and we've had a great harvest from that this year. So now I'm, I can move backwards and here you can see what I mean about sort of accessing the width of the garden as well as the length. Um, in this part of the garden I have lots of roses. I absolutely love roses. So in June this space would be full of beautiful pink roses and here on this fence um, I've got a fantastic climbing rose that I've trained. You can see these long canes going horizontally with the shoots going up. Uh, it's, that one is called James Galway and it's a fantastic vigorous climber um, that I absolutely love so good recommendation there. And the planting in all the beds is quite similar. We've got roses underplanted with geraniums, Nepeta, Alcamilla mollis, and a few other things. Um, there's not so many roses in bloom at the moment, but I can see one here. And really, even if you just have one single flower, that's kind of enough to appreciate it. I mean, look at that. This is Septodile, one of my favorites how gorgeous and delicious looking is that so so pretty look at that in this september morning sunshine absolutely love it so roses are probably my number one plant love the other two things that i really really love are tulips and in the springtime 
these beds here are full of tulips i have quite a, a big display i absolutely love them and i also put them in pots so um i wish kind of wish i could show you the space in springtime because then it would be full of color and gorgeous gorgeous tulips right so now moving on to the next section of the garden and you can see that here i have a sort of open space actually with a with a bit of lawn if you can call it that because really it's sort of postage stamp size but still it's a patch of grass and it's really lovely actually to have this um open section of the garden with a sense of space um but still bearing in mind on the design i've put my bit of grass in the middle in this neat square and i've got the gravel paths going around the outside and this is the same principle so it sort of makes you takes you on a little trip and you can go for a very short but still quite a nice walk so instead of just heading down the center of the garden to the end it makes you walk around the outside and experience it um, that way and actually you know you can go all the way into the corner um, and it just makes it feel a lot bigger than if I had beds running either side with full of sort of tall plants which almost you know can become quite overbearing so part of the reason we have this uh, lawn is because even though I sort of refer to it, this garden as my garden, of course it's our garden, I do have a family, I have a young son and this is a space where we can put a blanket down and have a garden picnic, pitch a tent and even play a bit of football with that lovely garden bench there as a, as a, as a goal. Um, but I must confess that in my gardening mind, I'm kind of itching to start planting this area up. I mean, can you imagine having, uh, creating some beds here, maybe one on either side, but still keeping the paths on the outside. And that would mean I could plant more gorgeous roses and beautiful plants. Or another thing that I might do um, is to stop mowing this grass, letting it grow up and introducing some lovely wildflower seeds and maybe just having a mown path down the middle. Oh, that would be so gorgeous. I imagine these sort of tall grasses swaying in the wind uh, with lovely wildflowers. So who knows, maybe, I think we'll have to let um, little Monty outgrow his uh, football playing years and then we'll see what happens with that space. In the meantime, we're just gonna enjoy it. So I'm gonna move down and you can see more roses. Uh, we've got these fences that are not the most attractive things and I really wanted to cover them uh, as quickly as possible with a beautiful rose. This is Rose Super Fairy and it is really fantastic. It's been flowering since June on and off and it will keep going for another while yet. Um, it's a rambling rose, but it's unusual because it repeats. Um, so I will have flowers most of the summer and they are these gorgeous pink rosettes always buzzing with bees and here they are swaying in the wind it's so pretty then we have the main focal point in this part of the garden which is this vintage french um, iron bench um, with pots either side i do like a bit of symmetry in the garden which is really nice love having kind of matching pots on either side uh, it's really pretty but it means you have to buy two of everything so you know bear that in mind um, right, so now we have come to this section where you can see that we have a sort of a low brick wall with a trellis fence uh, that divides this front bit of the garden with the rest of it. And um, this uh, wall and fence were actually here when we moved in and it's really nice to have them because it's created two separate garden rooms here which means that i can create a different sort of atmosphere and vibe um, in the different parts and i think it's really important to remember even if you have a small garden like mine you can still put these barriers and sort of divisions in still have a bit of ambition with a design like that and uh, it will allow you to maybe have slightly different looks in the in the different sections of the garden so um, I've got my roses which are all pink and pretty and I tend to grow really pretty pastel colored tulips so close to the house it's very much a romantic feeling uh, with soft colors pinks and blues and then here at the back 
I've got bold colors because I love bold and bright colors as well. And also the other thing that it does, it lets you sort of focus on different um, times of interest in the garden. So I've got my tulips and roses at the front that are lovely in May and June. And then as we come into July, this section at the back really comes into its own. So I've, I've put a little arch there at the top, which creates a lovely kind of doorway that just invites you in to this next section of the garden. And I've got roses growing, but you can see what's happened is that my nasturtiums have completely taken over and they've climbed up and up and over. This was completely unintentional but I love it, a very happy accident. So you can still see there's some roses here. This is Rose New Dawn just going over and the petals will probably fall off now, but I love it when they're at this stage. And the combination with the bright orange nasturtiums and the soft pink roses, I think is really, really lovely. So here we are, gorgeous climbing nasturtiums. I'm just gonna go down to kind of ground level to show you these sort of nodding in the wind. They are so pretty and a lovely mixture of colours. Okay, so then we go through to the next section of the garden and here is something exciting. These are the first lilies ever for me. How gorgeous are they? Catching their sunlight there. I love them. It's definitely not the last time I grow lilies. So if I stand up, you can see all these gorgeous, bold, bright, plants uh, so here we have lots of dahlias got rudbeckias and kind of the star plant for me this year uh, which is something I've never grown before it's this tithonia there we are um, also known as Mexican sunflower I think um, I've never grown it before and but I had seen it in seed catalogues and also I saw it at Sissinghurst last year and I absolutely loved it so I thought I'd have a try uh, and it's worked out really well it's so tall you know I'm six foot and this is way taller than me and I just adore this um, velvety matte petals in the most zingy bright orange they are so gorgeous and the bees are crazy for it um, and then we have some gorgeous dahlias, mainly pink ones. The other ones seem to sort of have disappeared. I'm not sure what happened. Um, and lovely rudbeckias there, which are great for cutting. They last for ages in the bar, so I absolutely love those. And I do like to cut flowers from here. So even though I'm, I don't grow for cutting specifically, I do like to take my dahlias and um, everything here into the house. On the other side, it's a bit more shaded, but you can see that Tithonias love this space as well. Got a big one there, we've got some dahlias in pots and zinnia here, some lovely cosmos there. Uh, we get into the end of the season, so things are starting to collapse a little bit here, but um, you know, it's still looking quite pretty. Further down, we have um, calendula and more nasturtiums. I mean, they do go everywhere, don't they? but we love them and also up here enjoying the autumn sunshine sunflowers there we are and here in the corner i've got my favorite spot to sit and have a coffee i love sitting there just looking at my plants planning what jobs i'm going to do and just enjoying the garden Okay, so now, oh, one more thing to show you before we carry on. This is my fig tree, which is absolutely gorgeous. I love it, the shape of the leaves. And when the sun shines through, it just looks so beautiful. There's loads of fruit on it this year. I'm not sure they're going to ripen fully, but fingers crossed, if we get some more lovely sunshine now in September and October, who knows, we might get some fruit. Now, this is basically as far as we've got so far and the next section of the garden has not been touched. So this is a project yet to do, um, but I thought we'd take a walk down there anyway because it's important to remember, you know, when you look on Instagram or you watch uh, gardening programs or whatever, it's easy to think that everyone has these perfect manicured gardens and they're all so beautiful, but you know, of course, um, everyone has their sort of messy corners and I certainly have lots of those 
But this is an exciting project to do, um, possibly during the winter or as soon as we can get to it really. Um, the space is, is quite a shady spot. Um, so I'm thinking lots of lovely shade loving kind of foliage plants. I also want to have spring flowering bulbs here, probably not tulips, but not the and things. I've got these lovely sort of raised planters and it's looking very messy and sorry for itself, but it's crying out for, for, you know, a lovely project. I think what we're going to do is have some beautiful brick paving here with some kind of loungy type furniture a couple of armchairs. My husband has said he wants somewhere to sit and have a cocktail and look out over the garden and this is the perfect place. And then I think we will have some raised planters here with gorgeous lush foliage. Um, so yeah, if you um, were to come back and have a look in a year's time, hopefully this would look very different. There's a lot of work to do, but you know, it doesn't scare me. We've done everything here in this garden ourselves. And uh, so we're not scared of a bit of hard work. Now, even though this section is also not finished, you can see one exciting thing. For me, this was hugely exciting. This is my little greenhouse. Um, it is new for this year and I've, it really is a dream come true. For a long time, I kind of didn't think that I could have one, you know, in a small under garden. I just thought I don't have the space. But then I was inspired. I saw someone else with a similar sized garden that had a greenhouse and I thought, of course I can. So here we are. Um, I got it for my birthday a few years ago and it basically sat in its box for a couple of years. Finally, at Easter time this year, we got it up and I love it. We've had tomatoes here and I've got cucumber over there and now I've just sowed some winter salads and some kale that I'm gonna plant out in the vegetable beds quite soon. I haven't actually really moved in here properly so I'm going to um, kind of, you know, put up more shelves and um, tidy, it needs a bit of a tidy up, uh, but I'm enjoying it so much. And my favorite thing is to sit in here when it's raining uh, with a cup of tea and just look out and be all cozy and happy that I have a greenhouse. Okay, so if we go back out, um, we get to the very back of the garden. This is the final section. So again, this is almost like a separate garden room. This is looking very messy. Um, we have falling down fences, we have rubble and rubbish, and it's work in progress, but um, there is still stuff to see here. So these are vegetable beds. We've got two raised, raised beds. We've got climbing beans here at the back, and this needs a serious tidy up. I mean, you know, it's not all perfect. I'm a full-time working mum. I don't always have time to keep on top of things. Looks like a bunch of weeds, but actually there's stuff still growing here. We've got lovely basil to pick. We've got beetroot. Let me show you, you can see one ready to go there. And then my favorite crop of all, I think, is kale. I just love it. You just keep picking it. This has been, we've been harvesting it since May, I think, and it's mid-September now. It is so good. I mean, obviously I love eating it, which is important, but it's also really pretty and it just keeps going. Um, and then we have something quite fun. This is my pumpkin arch. And I'll tell you the story behind this. Um, there's a lotly amazing garden in the Cotswolds called Barnsley House. It's a really special place for me and I know that Linda also love it. Um, we've bonded over that in the past. It's such an inspiring place. If you ever get the opportunity to go, do go. Um, I was there in September last year and I saw in their wonderful kitchen garden their squash and pumpkin tunnel and I thought how fun it would be to create something similar. So I, I have um, basically done a version of. It's nothing like what they have at Barnsley House but it's really fun and I'm happy with how it's turned out. So I just used bamboo canes that I harvested from my own bamboos and I've um, just tied two together, bent them at the top, and then made them cross over. And then I planted my pumpkins, first nothing happened, and then all of a sudden they took off and they just grew really quickly. And here we have some little baby pumpkins. We've got one there, another one up there. Let's see if you can see it. There we go. And a different variety down here. And I just hope that they will carry on growing and maybe we get some miniature pumpkins come October time. If we look up, we've got another one there. There you go. It's 
always fun to try something new. Now, I thought I'd just finish off by walking back down the garden to give you that point of view as well. So there's the greenhouse again, and then we get to this bit that is yet to be developed. Messy, but exciting as far as projects go. And then we go back down the steps, all the dahlias, my lovely um, spot to sit for a drink. Here we go, these crazy tall tithonia. We go back through the arch and we come out to the next section. The gorgeous roses and the square bags and the little grass. So now you've seen the whole of my garden. I really hope you enjoyed it and maybe got some inspiration as well. Thank you so much for watching and thank you Linda. Bye bye!